Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> this is Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm going to answer question number six from the June stroke October 2020 mechanics M1 paper. And um, this question number six is about connected particles. So there's a railway engine of mass 1500 kilograms is attached to a railway truck of mass 500 kilograms by a straight rigid coupling. The engine pushes the truck up the track. Okay, so the engine, this is the engine, this is the truck. The engine is pushing the truck up the track, which is inclined to the horizontal angle alpha, where sine alpha equals seven over 25. The coupling is parallel to the track and parallel to the direction of motion as shown in figure three. The engine produces a constant driving force of magnitude d newtons. The engine and the truck experience constant resistances to motion from non-gravitational forces of magnitude 1200 newtons and 500 newtons respectively. The thrust in the coupling is 2000 newtons. The coupling is modeled as a light rod. We got to find the acceleration of the engine and the truck first. Okay, so a few points here to note. Um, first of all, this is the engine, and it has a mass of 1500 kilograms. And this is the truck, mass 500 kilograms. Now this is a straight rigid coupling, meaning it's not like a string. It's, it's something which, um, it's like a rod. Okay, so it doesn't bend or buckle. It doesn't become slack, all right? So when the engine is pushing upwards, okay, it's like there will be a thrust which pushes the truck up and also there will be a thrust pushing the other way in the um, in this rod which will cause uh, the thrust to also push in this direction so there will be a thrust acting in this direction and that direction okay that's what happens when you have this uh, rigid coupling if it's a string that won't happen if this, if this was a string, then the, 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 the engine would just smash into the truck because the string was, was just going to become, you know, taut. It's only when it's being pulled, you get tension in the string. But with a, um, with a coupling like this, a rigid rod, um, if it's being pulled, the tensions will act like in a string. Okay, so if, if you have a truck pulling, if you have the, the engine pulling the truck okay if, the, if if this was the engine pulling then the it would it would it would be something like this okay the engine will be pulling on the truck so the the string will be pulling the the truck up and the string will also have a force which will be acting you know pulling the engine it will have the effect of pull, pulling the engine down okay it's kind of this is pulling on that and that's pulling on that um, those forces would like that the tensions in the string would be like this but this is a coupling and in this particular case the the engine is pushing up so the driving force is acting in this direction from the truck and it, it's pushing up the truck and um, and the truck for, for uh, the truck is also pushing down on the engine okay the thrust is pushing down on the engine it's like this rod is keeping them apart from each other okay that's what's happening this pushes this is like um, kind of compressing the rod. So the rod is pushing up the truck uh, and the rod is also pushing the engine away from them, from the truck. So they're kind of like keeping them away from each other. That's, you could think of it like that. Okay, then it says, um, all right, so the engine and the truck experience constant resistance to the motion. Let me just put the, let me put the values on over here so that it's a bit clearer. So we've got a few things, as I mentioned, we've got the driving force, this, the driving force, which is we're going to call D. We've got the ten, the, the thrust, they are T, we know the values of them, I'll just leave it as T for now. We've got the weight of the engine and the weight of the um, truck. The weight of the engine was 1500 so that's 1500 G, and this is 500 G. 
okay 1500 and 500 that's right the engine 1500 and you also have resistance to motion on the truck and resistance to motion so on the engine and on the truck so the resist resistance to motion on the engine is 1200 newtons and the resistance to motion on the truck is 500 newtons okay so this is inclined at uh, 90 at the uh, alpha degrees to the horizontal so one second let's a bit like this okay so you have here this angle here would be alpha okay these angles are alpha this has to be yeah, like that okay so therefore the component of the weight acting down the component of the weight acting down the slope would be this and this okay so you have a component acting down the slope here this is going to be 1500 g sine alpha and this will be 500 g sine alpha okay this is like the component acting because it's going away from the angle so this is 1500 g sine alpha and this is 500 g sine alpha acting down there's also a component of the weight acting you know perpendicular to the plane and there's a reaction force acting up but those we don't have to consider here because the own they, those won't those will not affect the motion of this truck as they are perpendicular to the motion of the truck the only way that these would affect the motion of the truck if we had to take into account f equals mu r friction okay but the friction and all the other resistive forces like air resistance are already being factored in in these forces here as it mentions here that the truck experiences constant resistances to motion from non-gravitational forces of magnitude 1200 newtons and 500 newtons respectively so this 1200 newtons takes into account the frictional forces and the air resistance forces as as does this 500 newtons so we don't have to worry about doing f equals mu r and finding the effect of you know the uh, reaction force to the friction okay because this already we already know all the uh, forces that are acting as resistance forces so we don't have to consider the perpendicular forces on this system okay so all we have to consider are these forces acting parallel to the plane parallel to the movement so we know that this is accelerating up the track and that's what we have to find in part a now what we can see here is we know what the tension the thrust in the in the rod is we know that it's um 2000 newtons so this is known and this is known okay the thing that we don't know is the d yet okay so if we consider just the part of the system that we know the information about which is this part here we know all this we know everything about this particular part of the system okay we can um, find out the acceleration using just that part because this D is unknown we don't know what it is so I can't use this part here so if I take this part here alone considering the forces only acting upon the truck so I'm going to consider forces acting on the truck alone consider the forces on the truck alone okay without the forces acting on the you know <clears throat> on the engine so if I, if I take the forces acting on the truck, what I have is I have the thrust acting up this way. So I'm, I know that it's going up the plane, so I'm going to take this direction as positive. So the thrust is acting up the plane. So you've got T. And then the other forces are acting down the plane, which is the resistance to motion, which is 500 newtons. And also the component of the weight, which also acts down the plane, which is 500 G sine alpha. And I know that that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. And the mass is 500, okay, times the acceleration, which we have to find. This is using F equals MA. This is the resultant force, and this is the mass times acceleration. Now, I know T is equal to 2,000, and I know that sine alpha 
is equal to 7 over 25. They told us that in the question. Okay, so therefore, I can say T, which is 2,000. We, they told us that as well. Minus 500, minus 500 times G, times sine alpha, which is times 7 over 25, is equal to 500 times A. Now, the only thing that we don't know here is A, so we can calculate A from that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my calculator and do that. Okay, so taking out the calculator, you have, let me just make some space here. You have 2000 minus 500 minus 500 times G, which is 9.8 times 7 over 25. That's equal to 128. So you have 128 equals 500 times A. So therefore, A is equal to 128 over 500, which gives us 0 0.256. 0 0.256 meters per second squared. Now, you could, if you want, write your answer as 0 0.26 if you want. That's also possible because we used G as 9.8 to 2 SF. So either this is acceptable or this is acceptable. Both of them will be perfectly acceptable. As it tells you in the beginning of the paper, it says if you, I'll just show you, if you've used G in your calculations, okay, it says whenever a numerical value of G is required, take G equals 9.8 meters per second squared and give your answer either to two significant figures or three significant figures so both of them will be acceptable if you did if you if you gave your answer to either two or three significant figures okay so there we have the answer to part a okay we found the acceleration in the system and i'll just write it as 0 0.256 meters per second squared okay now we got to do part b which is on the next page It says find the value of d okay so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to consider just this truck that is pushing up the truck the engine which is pushing up the truck so it's pushing up the truck with a force or driving force d okay acting on the engine i'm going to consider only the forces acting on the engines let me just move this in the middle of it so you can see better I'm going to only consider the forces acting on the engine now the forces acting on the engine are the, the the D which is the driving force which you have to find and the thrust that's pushing down on the engine keeping it apart from the truck which is 2000 newtons that's the thrust we also have the force from the resistance to motion which was 1200 newtons Okay, just to confirm the resistance to motion was 1200 that's right on the on the um, engine and we also had the weight of the engine which was 1500 newtons okay so you have the weight acting down and it's compound that's 1500 newtons it's 1500 g sorry that's the weight and you have the component of the weight acting down the slope which is 1500 times G times sine alpha that's a component of the weight acting down the slope okay and um, that's basically all the forces acting on this okay so we can and we know that it's accelerating we know the acceleration is 0 0.256 meters per second squared again let me just make sure i remember that correctly that's right so we have the acceleration and we have all the forces acting on this the only thing we don't know is d so we can find it so again resolving forces going up the plane um we know that you've got d acting up the plane and all the other forces are acting down so you've got minus the thrust which is 2000 minus the resistance forces which is 1200 minus the component of the weight down the plane which is 1500 times g times sine alpha and remember if we 
we sign alpha was 7 over 25. So that's times 7 over 25. And that's equal to the mass times acceleration, which is 1500, which is the mass is 1500 times acceleration, which was 0 0.256. So we can see here, the only thing we don't know is D. So basically, you're going to have D minus, just add all of these forces together. So we have 2000 and 1200 and 1500 times 9.8 times 7 over 25. Okay, so that's 7316. 7316 equals and you got 1500 times 0 0.256 that gives you 384 so we can say that d is equal to 7316 plus 384 so you add to this 7316 and you get 7700 newtons and there we have the driving force acting on this, uh, you know, that's pushing this whole system up. Okay, so what we can do in these connected particles kind of questions is you can consider each of these separately. Now, normally in this type of question, you would consider the whole system, the whole system as one thing, and you'd find the acceleration that way. But because we don't know the value of D, we can't actually do that because then we have uh, two unknowns. So it's easy for us to just consider the, this, this truck that's being pushed up because we know all the forces acting on it. We know the thrust, it told us in the question, the thrust was 2,000. Uh, we know the frictional forces, we know the force due to gravity, we know all the forces acting upon this. Okay, and the thrust, you see, it has, it's caused by, part of it is caused by the, this driving force. So that's you know, because we know what this is, we know all the forces acting on this, we can use this to find the acceleration, just considering the forces acting on this alone. And then once we know the acceleration, we can then consider, as we did, the forces acting upon this alone to find the driving force, because we know the acceleration now, the only thing we won't know is the D. Okay, so you can consider each particle separately to find what you need to find in these type of questions. And as I mentioned here, already that the... Um, perpendicular to the plane forces we don't have to bother about them because the only thing that they would affect would be the friction and we already know what we need to know about the resistance forces so there's no need for us to find the perpendicular um, components of the weight because not the per perpendicular to the plane components of the weight because you know the perpendicular forces have no effect on the um, forces that are they perpendicular to all right, so that's basically the answer to this question, number six. Other questions about um, connected particles, you'll find in this, in this playlist somewhere over here, which should show up soon. You'll find other questions that I've answered from this paper in the playlist over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top of the page, I'll put a, a link, a card to some other M1 papers you might be interested in watching. Thank you for watching and see you soon.